Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to an updated patron, Michael G. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. If you've been following along, you know that Tesla has been working on a replacement for the Cybertruck aero caps, and Nick Patain on X shared this quick video. It looks like Tesla is using the base Cybertruck aero wheel cover, which is just a smaller version with some of the upgraded wheels, at least for now. Just wanted to clarify, this may not be a permanent solution, just a stopgap. Just in case you are experiencing some connectivity issues with your Tesla today, specifically when it came to LTE, this may have been the problem. AT&T had a pretty widespread outage. I'm sure many of you have seen the video of the Cybertruck driving through pretty deep water, but no one was really talking about what happened after the fact. This plastic piece on the back came loose. Seems like a pretty easy fix on that one. But the buttons for the tonneau cover on the Cybertruck were not working. However, it was still working if you tried to control it from the mobile app. Finally, he said he could hear some water swishing around somewhere in the Cybertruck, but he couldn't tell where it was coming from. If you didn't see the video, they really weren't using wade mode as intended. There were some attempts when they were going 25, 30 miles an hour right into the water, which is not recommended. James Cat shared some Google search results of the phrase Tesla saying, I think you guys can do better with the descriptions under the links, especially when you factor in SEO, I would agree. Martin Vieca, Tesla's head of IR, chimed in and said on it. So that's pretty cool. If you haven't noticed, Tesla executives have been a bit more active as of late on X. This does, however, highlight the lack of attention that Tesla has spent on marketing to date as things like this are quite literally marketing 101. Going through NVIDIA's Q4 conference call, you'll find this. Almost 80 vehicle manufacturers across global OEMs, new energy vehicles, trucking, robo-taxi, and tier one suppliers are using NVIDIA's AI infrastructure to train LLMs and other AI models for automated driving and AI cockpit applications. In fact, nearly every automotive company working on AI is working with NVIDIA. As AV algorithms move to video transformers and more cars are equipped with cameras, we expect NVIDIA's automotive data center processing demand to grow significantly. Think about what this means for Tesla. You have most of the industry heavily reliant on NVIDIA for a majority of their autonomous driving infrastructure, compared to Tesla who has vertically integrated most of their autonomous driving infrastructure. One obvious example, Tesla's hardware for its in-car inference compute that is hyper-efficient and can cost an order of magnitude less than some of these other solutions from other third parties that most of the industry is reliant upon. Here's part of the conversation that goes overlooked. Everybody's hyper-focused on who's gonna solve FSD first, understandably. But when that time comes, it's then going to become who does it efficiently, and that has two facets, cost efficiency and compute efficiency. Not to mention, Tesla's not nearly as reliant on NVIDIA, meaning they don't have to pay those 76% gross margins to NVIDIA. Now, to be clear, yes, Tesla is still spending billions of dollars to buy NVIDIA chips, but it's to actually train the FSD neural nets not to run local inference compute on the vehicles. Lastly, I would reiterate, NVIDIA said, as autonomous vehicle algorithms move to video transformers and more cars are equipped with cameras, Hint, hint, that's Tesla's strategy. Zipping through Elon's thoughts on Lucid and Rivian earnings of Lucid, he said their Saudi sugar daddy is the only thing keeping them alive. On Rivian, Elon said the current trajectory has them bankrupt in around six quarters. Maybe that trajectory will change, but so far it has not. Replying to K10 about Rivian, Elon said their product design is not bad, but the actual hard part of making a car company work is achieving volume production with positive cash flow. On that point, AJ shared a great chart showing the free cash flow history of pure EV makers. Currently right now, Tesla the only one positive, but don't forget the trajectory it took them to actually get there. Yes, these figures are cumulative and some context for Rivian in 2022, their negative free cash flow was 6.4 billion. Then last year, it improved slightly to 5.8 billion, still negative. Replying to this data, Elon did say hard problem. We've been saying it now on the channel for over two years and it's still true. There's no guarantee any of these other pure EV startups actually make it. For whatever it's worth, according to some White House visitor logs, last year on September 13th, 
it's being reported that Elon and Rohan Patel visited the White House. That would be Elon's first and only meeting there since Biden took office in 2021. All we learned from this was that the meeting was about AI and that Elon and Biden did not meet. It's not perfect, but there's certainly plenty of very encouraging video of FSD V12 so far. I have two treats for you right now. I owe you an explanation from last week, so here's part of it. Treat one, my go-to healthy snack to satiate my sweet tooth any time of the day. I highly recommend trying out Soylent, the sponsor of this video. Some mornings I'm out and about and don't always have time to make breakfast or just don't want to. Enter Soylent. The brand became famous as a complete meal replacement shake for the tech community in Silicon Valley and caught fire from there. My favorite for the morning is the Cafe Mocha with a bit of caffeine and L-theanine for focus. No refrigeration needed, no artificial flavors or colors, it's vegan and gluten free, 20 grams of protein in every serving and only one gram of sugar. And seriously, I think they taste really good, like a snack to be enjoyed. Kantar Research did a study of over 40,000 people and Soylent won product of the year and has been dubbed the world's most perfect food. Soylent has also managed to keep their products affordable despite the media hype. The first 500 people to use my link below and my code electrified30 will get 30% off their first subscription. Enjoy. And yes, treat number two, if you didn't catch it by now, I am no longer a fraud. <laughs> We bought a Model Y and it's going to help me cover the Tesla EV story in much greater detail and oh boy do we have some FSD stories. Stay tuned. It looks like Tesla will be setting up shop and entering Columbia officially rather than what's historically been really only private imports. We don't really have any details on when or where. Just so you know, Columbia, not a massive auto market for last year from January to October. 147.8 thousand new vehicles were registered, which was down 32% from the same time in 2022. Speaking of Tesla execs active on X, Drew Baglino replied to Joseph who asked, are you guys doing anything to reduce the vampire drain when sentry mode is active? Drew said, agreed. Sentry mode power consumption needs improvement. The team is working to reduce by around 40% in a Q2 software update. That of course is great news as I'm sure you know some Tesla owners that won't use sentry mode in certain situations specifically due to the power use. In case you didn't know, there is already a feature where you can use sentry mode but turn off the cameras and sentry mode will operate only using the sensors. So effectively, if somebody actually bumps into your car only, avoiding the cameras, picking up people just walking or driving by your car. Here we have it. What is Tesla up to in the suburbs of Kyle and Hutto in Austin? In the area, Tesla has signed a few leases, one of which is for three warehouses totaling 1 million square feet of space. On the Tesla careers page, if you search for Kyle, you'll find four jobs, supervisor for supply chain, incoming quality supervisor for cell manufacturing, incoming quality tech for cell battery, and supervisor for supply quality engineering. The quality supervisor will lead one of the first teams of incoming quality technicians for our incoming production area during our night shift operations. So in Kyle, we should be expecting some level of battery material sourcing, production, and manufacturing. Then changing the search to Hutto, you find chemical operator for battery minerals and metals and recycling development lead battery minerals and metals. For the chemical operator, they'll be scaling the production of battery metals and closing the loop with recycling. And the recycling development lead will be responsible for conceiving and deploying state-of-the-art technology, dot, 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 through battery recycling. Back to the article, a Texas filing listed Project Tiger 
that also showed plans to build out an office and warehouse space with light manufacturing. The project Tiger codename is for Tesla's Kyle project. We've known now for a few years, Tesla has had long-term plans for massive expansion in the Austin area, not just for production of vehicles, but for a full-blown battery EV ecosystem. So there's no mine involved yet, but Tesla is looking to go from refining to end product and then back around again, bringing recycling into the equation. Tesla has been working on recycling behind the scenes now for years, but clearly with this expansion, they're working on something new. This is Bad Bunny, a wildly famous Latin reggae hip hop type of artist that has absolutely blown up. I shared that because he just posted this on his Instagram story, pulling up somewhere in his Cybertruck, just one more person on the list of very famous celebrities who are showing off the Cybertruck to their millions of followers. Add Mercedes to the list of companies now capitulating away from electric vehicles. They just tone down their expectations for EV demand. In response, they're saying they're going to continue updating its combustion engine lineup. Before this announcement, Mercedes was expecting all EV sales by 2030. Fast forward to now, they're expecting EV sales, including hybrids, to account for up to 50% of the total by that date. The reasons they gave for this slower EV demand, a lack of charging infrastructure, and a lack of appealing electric models. Listen, you can critique Elon and Tesla's style and decision making all you want, but at the end of the day, when you look around, their competition is still for the most part pretty irrelevant outside of the Chinese. Ford Pro CFO did just say today though that they're selling a higher mix of e-transits to state and local governments as well as small businesses compared to the ICE variant. Our customers are focused on total cost of ownership. Can it address a use case? And is it the right tool for the job? When it comes to electric vehicles and pro, we've seen areas where it's going better than expected. Developer operator Strata has finally secured funding for a pretty big battery storage project near Phoenix. This one is over one gigawatt hour. This project dubbed Scatterwash will come online in April 2025 and provide power and energy to the Arizona Public Service Utility under a 20 year tolling agreement. What that means, it's where developer operators own the project, but all of the energy is provided to another company or companies under that agreement. You love to see these large battery storage projects going up across the country, but this one is even better because yes, it will be delivered using Tesla Megapack 2XLs. Yaro on X shared some pictures of what's under the bed of the Tesla Cybertruck, some air suspension components, for you engineers that want to study it, get ready to pause. I have to admit, this is one of the weirder stories related to Tesla that I can remember reading. Long story short, on Valentine's Day at Tesla, an employee reportedly placed an order for 2,000 pies from this local pie shop. Then when the pie shop owner reached out to Tesla saying, hey, you guys haven't paid for this order yet, whoever she talked to at Tesla said, sorry about that, the vendor is new and actually can we double the order? But apparently right when the owner was about to deliver these 4,000 pies, somebody from Tesla called and canceled the order saying it came from higher up. No idea what's going on here. This is the owner of the shop and if some Tesla employee did that for whatever stupid reason, that is actually pretty messed up. I know many people out there are are feeling down about Tesla stock and don't have much hope for 2024. I'm not trying to pump up some hopium here, just some things to think about as we go through the year. If the Cybertruck ramp beats expectations and starts to ramp up faster than anybody is expecting, and they can sell more than a thousand foundation series vehicles, maybe in excess of 10,000, that could be a slight boost to margin expectations. The Tesla energy gross margin was 21.8% in quarter four, primarily driven by the ramping taking place at Lathrop. So if Tesla energy can lift Tesla's operating margins back above 10%, that could be a nice stock tailwind as in Q3, Tesla's op margin was 7.6% and it was trending back up to 8.2 in quarter four. The obvious one, maybe price cuts will stabilize 
supplies and cogs will continue to come down. Hopefully version 12 goes to a wider release here in the next few weeks, and I think there's a chance this one does significantly impact the take rate because it is so much more human-like and more regular people will be able to trust it sooner. I do think we desperately need some clarity on the board of directors situation, this compensation plan for Elon, how it's going to play out, and will Tesla be able to move to Texas? And finally, a potential surprise catalyst. At any point, Tesla could announce an official partnership between them and XAI. Don't forget, Elon said he would discuss this with the Tesla board. As you've seen right now, the market is itching to throw money at any company proving itself in the AI realm. Today, Nvidia just declared AI a whole new industry. Elon and co obviously don't care about pumping up the stock price in the short term, but this type of move would be a great way to do that. Tesla gives, let's say, $5 billion and some Dojo compute to XAI, and in return, Tesla gets an equity stake in XAI and, of course, access to Grok. Tesla stock closed the day at $197.41, up 1.36%, while the NASDAQ was up 2.96%. Meanwhile, Rivian was down 25.5% on the day and Lucid was down 16.7%. And yes, in case you missed it in the Soylent ad, I now am a Model Y owner, so officially no longer a fraud. Seriously though, given our choice to live a debt-free lifestyle, this would not have happened without all of your support. And in the future now, this will give us a lot more exciting opportunities for new types of content, so be sure to stay tuned. Nothing's gonna change with the current cadence and content. We'll just add some extra stuff here and there. Don't forget, check out Soylent linked below. Pretty solid ingredients and honestly, it tastes like candy. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.